Hello, this is a second video in combinatorial results. In this video, we're going to look at putting in balls into K cells. And there's a, uh, four different ways to think about this. Um, we're going to give the different ways, give the formula or the, you know, the n total number of ways, and then we're going to give a heuristic argument on the proof of those numbers, on what it is. So here we have in uh, distinct balls. So maybe they're numbered one to n. And we have K cells. So the number of ways we can place these balls in these K cells is K raised to the n. Um, so here we have indistinct balls into K cells such that each cell has a known amount. Okay, and where the number of the each ball and each cell sums to n. So we want to know, for example, how many different ways can we arrange these balls so we have, you know, five in cell one, two in cell one or two, zero in cell three, nine in cell four. Then this is the formula right here, and it's uh, combinations n choose n one n two to n k ways. Okay. Um, Number three, we have um, in indistinguishable balls. So we just say, hey, we have in white balls. You can't tell them apart. And then how many different ways can we place those into K cells? And well, it's N plus K minus one, choose N different ways. Then a little uh, bonus to this one is Let's say we have in indistinguishable ball, balls and we want to place them into K cells such that there's no empty cell. And then it's N minus one, choose K minus one different ways. Okay, so let's just jump right in. And we're actually going to prove number two first because um, I think it's easier. So we this is the number of ways. Um, so here, um, is number two. So we're we're given we want N1 balls in cell one, N2 balls in cell two, all the way to NK balls in cell K. And we're placing N balls in each of those. And here's the, uh, the argument. It's the fundamental principle of counting. So the first cell, there's N balls, and we're placing N one of them in that cell. Well, how many different ways can we choose N one balls from the N? Well, it's N choose N1. Now, the second cell, there's only N minus N1 balls left, and we're choosing N2 of those. So this is the number of ways that we can choose N2 balls for cell 2. And then there's N minus N1 minus N2 balls left, and we're choosing N3 of those for cell 3. This is the number of ways we can do that. And this is cell K. And actually, there's only NK balls left. And we're putting in K of them in there. And it's, so it's the product of these numbers. And then when you break the E's formulas down, so this N factorial over N minus 1 factorial, N minus 1 factorial. And then you do that for each of these, and then it simplifies to this number here. And so that's the answer. So now going back to number one, where we just want to know the total number of ways you can put in balls and K cells. Okay, so what we're going to do is kind of ignore this piece right here, first of all. So what, what is here is the number of ways that a specific number of balls can be put in cell one, say in one and in two into cell two and in K. But now that's only a specific setting. So if we sum over all possible ways that this formula can happen, or, you know, this then that's the answer. Um, well, that's a pretty complicated number potentially to solve for, to add up all these uh, different factorials. So let's think about this in a little different fashion. So if we take this number and multiply it by one, it doesn't change it. So that's what we do. And then we multiply it by one again, and then da -da 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 -da, multiply it by one again. So why do you do this? Well, this then becomes the multinomial um, 
formula. You know, that you've heard of the binomial formula or binomial coefficients or the Pascal's triangle. There's a formula that you can use to generate, you know, x plus y raised to n, you know, the, all those combinations. Well, this is the multinomial way. So that this expansion is the same as this, where there's k1s in there. And that those come from those ones right here. Well, the, uh, one added k times is k, and it's raised to the n, so k to the n is your answer. Um, so then let's look at the next one. Um, here oh so this is the argument we're going to take n balls and put them into k cells so the first ball you you have k different choices to put it in cell one through cell k this ball here you have k different choices to put it in so cell one or cell you know k for each ball you have k different choices so it's k you know, n time. So it's k raised to the n. So it's the same number. So this is just a different way to think about it versus the multinomial way. Now, number three, we're placing n indistinguishable balls. So let's say n white balls into k cells. What's the total number of ways to do it? Well, we're going to do this in a unique way. To our sample of n white balls, we're going to add k minus 1 bars to this sample. So you might think, well, what? why a bar? Well, over here, um, let's, let's say we have k equals 4. So there's four cells. And notice to create the image that we have four cells, 1, 2, 3, 4, we need three bars, or k minus 1 bars. And then if we put k minus 1 bars between these big thick things, then it creates four cells. So that's what we're going to try to do here is we have n white balls and k minus 1 bars. So now if we have um, n plus k minus 1 spots for these n plus k minus 1 objects, the n balls and the, and the n k minus 1 bars, and we start filling these randomly, then that simulates this setting where you have k bins for these balls so if you you know if you throw in all these n balls and let's say this is blank and this is blank well then you put bars there well then you know this is a bin and these two bars create an empty bin and then this one in the next bar has so many balls in it so that creates a, a bin or a cell so by randomly putting these in there that's the number of ways that you can kind of simulate in, in balls going into K cells. Well, what we're doing here is we have this many spaces and we're randomly picking in of them to put these balls, then the bars fill in and that emulates the, the it, the number of ways. So it's actually N plus K minus one, choose N different ways that this can happen. <clears throat> and that's the answer. Now, number four, we're putting in balls into K bars or K bins or cells, and we don't want any cell left empty. Okay, so now we're going to create another little illustration here. So we have in white balls, and that's what these represent. Okay, um, now these in balls create n minus 1 gaps, okay? So if we take these k minus 1 bars and throw, you know, one in, you know, randomly put them into gaps, then that's going to create something that looks like k cells or k bins. So if we put a cell here and here, then this cell has one ball, this cell has two, and then if then the next one ends up going here, then cell three has two. And so how does this, you know, so if we set our end balls and then randomly place these K minus one bars into these gaps, 
you know, however many ways you can do that is actually the total number of ways that you can put in balls into K cells. So the way to pick this is you have N minus one gaps and you're choosing K minus one of them. And then that's the number of ways that you can create the, you know, that's the number of ways to put in balls into K cells. So that's the answer. Well, that's what all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please like it, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. The next video is sort of a, a general formula for counting or probability, you know, uh, on, you know, say you want the probability exactly M events happen or, or at most M events or at least M events. That's the next video. It's a little bit uh, trickier, a little bit harder, but I think well worth it. So see you then. Bye.